second to last lecture of the year. Yeah. Today and then tomorrow, and that is it. It's very exciting. It's crazy, isn't it? Well, now the real work begins. This is where Denise, Denise, Demo kicks back. Denise, I'll be Denise instead of Demo for the next couple of weeks, where I kick back and watch you guys suffer. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. We do things called group slaughters and tests from hell. So it's very exciting. Yeah. Usually tests from hell are hard. They're not easy. Or they'd be tests from heaven. And if you don't believe in heaven or hell, um, I don't know. They're just hard. <laughs> Difficult. So today we're going to look at nomenclature of um, all those functional groups we talked about yesterday and then do some of the reactions. Um, the test, just to help you from here on out so you can think about how you're going to approach studying, it's going to be 50 multiple choice questions, this next test. And it's going to include organic and nuclear. We're doing nuclear in a day tomorrow. It's going to be good stuff. It's going to be quick and easy. Um, all right, so nomenclature for functional groups. We'll start out with our alcohols. If you remember, the alcohols have that OH, the hydroxyl functional group. And to name an alcohol, what you do is you look at the longest chain. Your OH has to be on the longest chain in order for it to be named appropriately. And you count the carbons. We have two carbons. So if that were an alkane, what would that be called? Two carbon alkane. S ane. If we drop the E and add OL, we get ethanol. And that's how you do it. It's not ethol. It's ethane. Drop the E and add OL. Okay, you've got to name it like an alkane first. Um, something that's not in this problem that I want to throw out. Say we have a butane with an OH there. Okay, you have to indicate where the hydroxide is, the hydroxyl is with a number. So this would be two what? Butanol. Okay, so you got to indicate where the OH goes. The OH takes precedence over any other of the alkyl groups, ethyl, methyl, chlorofluoro, all of them, because it changes the suffix. Anything that changes the suffix has to be on the lowest number carbon, no matter what. Okay? All right. Ethers, ether bunny, ROR. We have two groups hanging off of an O. All you do is you name the two groups as substituent groups with YLs, put them in alphabetical order, and then put the word ether after it. So we have an ethyl and an ethyl, so it's diethyl ether. What if I had, I don't think she's like laughing. <laughs> Who knew it was so funny? Um, what if we have that? What do we have on the left? A methyl and on the right? An ethyl. So what's the name of this? Ethyl methyl ether, because we have to put them in alphabetical order. Ethyl methyl. And these are separated. That's not all one word. Ethyl methyl ether. <laughs> all right. Alkyl halides. We already covered. This is not a functional group per se, because it's just naming the alkane, the, the ethane, with the chlorine as a chloro group. So you already know how to do that. Now we're moving to aldehydes. What was the name of the C double bond O functional group that are found both in aldehydes and ketones? Car carbonyl, correct. Carbonyl group. Um, the carbonyl group, since in this case it's terminal, meaning it's on an ending, do you see the, what do we see? Hey, Al. See the hoe, okay. So this is an aldehyde. Again, you name it like an alkane, and then you drop the E and add AL. So this is ethane, drop the E, and it's ethanol. So if I had this, two, three, four, I shouldn't do this one. Oh, well. This always gets me in trouble. I'm not saying anything. I'll just write down. What's this called? What's it called? One, two, three, four. Butanol, right? This always gets my dirty birdies going in the audience. All right, moving on quickly. Okay, let's go on. Um, naming ketones, we have that carbonyl group inside the chain. So you count the longest chain, and this would be three, so it's propane, but it's internal, it's on an aldehyde, it's a ketone. So we drop the E and add. O-N-E, so propanone. If you have a longer chain, 
and you have a double bond O, you have to indicate with a number where that double bond is. So what do you think this is called? 2-butanone. Um, organic acids, also known as carboxylic acids. Remember the carbox? That makes no sense. Kukukachu, the ending to this is the C-O-O-H, where the C is double bonded to the O, and then you have the O-H group. The way you name it is to name, again, your alkane, so that's ethane. These are always terminal. Drop the E, add oic acid, ethanoic acid. What would that be called? Hexanoic acid. Why don't I need a number? It's always terminal, always. All right, esters, yay. I'm going to stop the recording because we are going to sing the ester song, and I'm not going to put people at home through this. So, because all you'll hear is me singing, and that's not going to happen. So, like the song said, we've got two oxygens right there in its heart, so that's how you'll remember. Um, where these actually come from are the mix of an alcohol and an acid, and it says that in the song. So let me show you where it comes from. Um, if we have, we'll, we'll have an alcohol, we'll call it, um, this is but, um, propanol, okay, one propanol, and we're going to mix it with ethanoic acid, or we'll do propanoic acid, why not? Okay, where the ester comes from is when these two are mixed, a dehydration occurs, and we're going to lose a water. Where that comes from, I'm going to take this OH, and I'm going to steal that H. You see how that makes water? So I'm going to have water as a product. Well, where do I get the ester? That C right here will now bond to this O. It's going to flip around and bond. And so let me erase so we can get some room in here. The final product then, I need to flip this O, so I'm going to leave this like it is. I'm now going to bond to that O, and then I'm going to have three carbons after it. One, two, three. All right, so that's how esters are made. As far as naming them, this is the demo method for naming. Don't, don't like, write this down anywhere. Just listen. Um, what I, I suggest doing is find where the two O's are, draw a line. Now, the ester has two names, a first name and a last name. Which of your names is important in your life? Your first name. Your last name. Who said first name? Really? Really? <laughs> All right. Our last name, our surname, is, is the, the family name is more important. So which one of these two sides look like it's a little more important to you? The double bonded O side. So the double bonded O side is the surname. The single bonded O side is the first name. You name the first name like an alkyl group. One CH3 hanging off of something is called methyl. Then you name the rest like an alkane, drop the E and add O8. One, two is ethane, drop the E and add O8. So it's methyl ethano8. Now why does the song say drop the ick at ATE? What the song is doing, the song is saying, okay, we are looking at this as an acid, what acid did this come from? Ethanoic acid. So the song's like drop this ick at ATE. So that's just a different way of approaching it, but it's kind of the same thing. So we're going to practice esters. Don't, if you don't get it yet, you will. All right, amines, these are very important. Remember, the amine is the nitrogen that's got three possible, up to three carbon chains hanging off of it. For every carbon chain that's not present, there has to be an H as a placeholder. So this only has one chain off of it, and it's an ethyl, so we call it ethylamine. What do you think I call this? Diethylamine. What do you think I call this? Ethylmethylamine. Correct. So this would be diethylamine. And those H's are merely placeholders, and this would be alphabet alphabetically ethyl methyl amine. 
Okay, and Amides, you don't need to name. No naming. All I want you to do is to be able to recognize an amide as being like a hybrid between an amine and an ester. In the heart, we've got an N and an O. Just recognize that that's an amide. Okay, ready to practice this, put all this stuff into play? Go to the page that says Advanced Organic Nomenclature on it, which would be page, what? So I can tell the people at home. Page 9 of the notes. Okay, so let's name these. The first thing, there's going to be some parts of the test where all you're going to have to do is tell me the family. So this first compound is what? An alcohol. So let's go ahead and name it. OH has to be on the longest chain. So that to me looks like the longest chain. So without worrying about this methyl group just yet, what's the name of that alcohol? Mm -mm. Propanol. What kind of propanol, though? More, no. And without the methyl, what kind of propanol is that? One propanol. You got it? Because I can have a two propanol, right? You got to tell me where that OH is. So now, Anne, add to that to what? What? What you said? It's two methyl, one propanol. Y'all get it? You got to tell me where that OH is. It's not always going to be on the first carbon. In some of these examples, it is. Um, but this one, this is tricky. A lot of people want to say, oh, one, two, three is where we're going to go. Oh, that is right. Never mind. I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, so this is the longest chain, and the longest chain has to include the OH. Some people might decide that they want to make this the longest chain, and it wouldn't be right because the OH is not attached directly to the longest chain, and it needs to be. Okay. So if we make this three-carbon chain our longest chain, what would this be? Is it four? One, two. Yeah, Demos must be smoking again. Four. All right, there's four. So, anywho, what's this called? Good. Three, three, dimethyl, one, butanol. Okay, the next one. Where's the longest chain? We're not going to do this dial. I'm not going to do that to you. Where's the longest chain on? The next problem. It's got to include the OH, so here. And if I go this way, it's only two. So that's not the longest. The longest is three. One, two, three. So what would this be? Two methyl, two propanol. Good. Okay, what family is this guy? It's the ether bunny, R-O-R. -R. So we have just something, something ether. And what's this called? Ethyl, methyl, ether in alphabetical order. Okay, Ooh, another ethyl, ethyl, ether. What do you think? What was that benzene when it was in substituent group? What was that called? Phenol. We, we know that this is an ether. This is what takes precedence. So we're not looking at this as a benzene ring. That's merely a substituent on the ether. So it is called what? Ethyl phenyl ether. Ethyl, because we have an ethyl group. Phenol, because it's a benzene as a substituent. Ether. Oh, that looks like an, an N, but it's not. Yeah, but these are all spaced out. It's when they're something, something ether, something, something um, amine, they're spaced out. Oh, the next one has a fancy substituent on. We don't see a lot, but I told you to learn it. Nope, it's not tert, because tert is tert butyl. This is how many in the chain? Three, so it's some kind of propyl. What kind of propyl? I heard it. Isopropyl, exactly. So this is the Y. The Y is the isopropyl group. Um, so what would this be called? Yes, louder, guys, with conviction. Isopropyl, methyl, 
It's okay if you're wrong. What happens if you're wrong? Jasmina has been wrong like 87 times, and she's still alive and kicking, right? You won't die if you're wrong. All right. What's up next? Another ether. What is this one? Make it a substituent. Cyclohexyl methyl ether. Good. Okay, next doozy. And in the middle, diethylamine. Okay, this is a mistake. I want you to make this H and N and make it NO2. It is. It's nitro. So what do we call it? not just a pentane, nitrocyclopentane. And we don't have to put a one on it because it's a cyclo. Nitrocyclopentane. OK, this is one that required memorization as well. Look at it from the perspective of this dude right there. What was that called? Not toluene. Toluene is a methyl benzene. Xylene is a dimethyl benzene. Aniline. This is aniline. Understanding aniline that it has to be carbon one, so that makes this carbon four. So with that being said, what's it called? Four nitroaniline. Is it aniline or aniline? <laughs> it's an I. All right. Ooh, what's this next one? That's kind of pretty. They're all one, two, three, four. They all have four. Perfect. Tributylamine. Okay. Ooh, what is that? <laughs> Not Easter. Esther. It's the ether bunny, but it's the ester. So draw your line. First name is an alkyl substituent group based on the side that has the single bonded O. One, two, three carbons. What's that called? Propyl. The last name, one, two carbons. Ethane, drop the E and add O8. Ethanoate. Good. Next dude. Another ester. Cut them. What's this one? Methyl. And they're all not ethanoates. This one happens to be ethanoate as well. There's propanoate and pentanoate and butanoate. FNO8. So you do count the carbon that has the double bonded O and the carbon that has the final. Okay. Woo, what's the last one? What do you see here? You see what? You see the hose. So, hey, Al, it's an aldehyde. Count this carbon as well. One, two, three, four, five. What's this called? Pentanal. Why don't I need a number? Don't I need a number? Nope, it's always terminal. All right. Oh, there's another. See the hoe? So what do we do? Count one, two, three. What's the base name of this? Propanol. Now, this is always carbon one. Your terminal is always carbon one. So, what does that make the rest of this called? Good. Three, three dibromo propanol. Ooh, let's see if you can do the next one. Is that terminal? Is that a terminal carbonyl group? No, it's in a ring. It's in it's a ketone. Did you say it's a ketone? Is that what you just said? Okay. She's being ghetto over there. All right, it's a ketone. So what do we call it? It's true. Cyclo name it name it as an alkane. Cyclopentane. Drop the E and add O N E. So cyclo 
pentanone. The trick is to name it as an alkane first. Do you have a question? Okay. Um, this one is actually not legitimately drawn. To make this right, I want you to draw your pentane, and I want you to put this C, right, the double bond, right off of the ring. Then I feel a lot better about naming this one. Hmm. Carboxylic. So, name it as an alkane, cyclopentane. Drop, drop the E and add oic, cyclopentanoic acid. People, I don't know what they're talking about. Okay, um, next one. What's the family here? Alcohol. One, two, three, four, five. What's this called? One. Pentanol. What's this one called? No one, no one. Cyclopentanol. What's the next one called? Nope. Triethyl, I mean. Julian's having ethyl methyl problems today. And what's this last one called? Two nitro propane. Dang it, Nimish. Make me feel bad about that. I have to say it. I can't. I can't let this slide. All right, we got a problem here. Does anyone see a problem? Oh, what's the problem, Nimish? There's five bonds on this carbon. So this is actually a crap picture. So let's just pretend it doesn't exist. But we get the clue of how to name it as if it were a carboxylic acid, correct? All right. Moving on. It's a ketone. No, it's not a ketone. It's an ether, so it's a diphenyl ether. Yay. This one. This is from yesterday. One, two, three. Two chloro. We don't need the one. Two chloropropene. Two chloropropene. Okay, from the perspective of this, let's name this. Aniline is carbon one. Nope. Two, four, six. <laughs> Desmina misses the easy stuff. <laughs> That's accounting. Um, it's tribromo aniline. And the last one, woohoo! One four. What's the other way of saying one four in a benzene ring? Para. I take either one. Dibromo. Benzene. Okay. Don't forget we have xylene and stuff to deal with. All right. Now let's move on to reactions. Um, this is going to be back on page. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Page four. Bottom of page four. Now I'm going to cut down significantly on the amount that you need to study for this test. Um, a lot of this I did was more than what would ever show up in the AP, and there's so many of you taking organic. I'm like, whatever, I'll teach it to you next year. So I'm only giving you minimal reactions. Um, I'm going to give you addition and, and um, substitution reactions. So the first thing is it's called a substitution reaction. This occurs on all your unsaturated hydrocarbons. So as soon as we get saturated and start having double bonds, meaning pi bonds, weirder things happen. Right now, all that's going to happen is we're going to have a swap, swap of dance partners. So if we have an alkane and we add a halogen, have an alkane and we add a halogen, we're just going to swap places. And we're going to make chloromethane in this case. And Doing that creates an HCl, and then the Cl pops onto there, and that's it. 
It's that simple. Depending upon the number of moles you have, we could eventually fill this all the way up with chlorine. But for now, most I'd say is what happens if you add two moles? Then you get two substitutions and two HCLs. All right, simple? All right, again, this has to be with alkanes. Where we get crazy things of addition happening is with our alkenes and alkynes because of the, those pi bonds. Um, what I want you to do is think of the double bond as this. If you have a double bond, when we add something to that double bond, remember, sigma bond is located, and that's st sturdy and stable. But remember, that bond, the pi bond, and I'm just saying that that is specifically a pi bond, not necessarily it isn't. But let's pretend that's the pi bond. It's going to open up. The arms will open up. I didn't mean to erase all of it. We got our sigma. It'll open up that pi bond. Imagine it. Can you all envision what I'm saying? It opens up and then creates two spots where we can add things. So if we take an alkene and we halogenate it, this black thing opens up. And we have a spot now for two things to jump on. And that double bond is gone. It's now a single bond. Since this is a symmetrical thing we're adding, meaning H is the same as H, we just pop two H's on, making CH3 here. And this is now a CH2. So it turns a propene to a propane. We're saturating it. If I have an alkyne, I can add one mole of H and make a butene. Opens up one set, makes a butene. But if I add a second mole, it's going to open everything up and make a butane. Got it? All right. So this is called hydrogenation. Easy. Halogenation is the exact same thing, but instead of adding an H and an H, we add a Cl and a Cl, or a Br and a Br. Again, this guy disappears here, opens up, and we put a Cl here and a Cl there. So we get 1,2-dichloropropane. If we add one mole, instead of two to an alkyne, we would have ended up first with one, two, just one Cl would have added to each, and it would be one, two, dichloropropene. And then if we add the second one, it would have totally saturated it to one, one, two, two, tetrachloropropane. Got it? All right, so the only other thing we're going to do, so this is hydration and halogenation with what we call symmetrical reagents. This is symmetrical. And this is symmetrical. There are two asymmetrical reagents that we're going to use, hydrohalogens and water. So hydrohalogen, instead of adding an H and an H, we're adding to the two spots. We add an H to one and a Br to the other in this case. Well, if this little thing goes away, bye, get out of here. And I'm going to have a spot here and a spot there. Which goes where? Where do I put the H and where do I put the Br? This is Markovnikov's rule. This has to do with the stability of what we call a carbocation and the first step of a mechanism. Lots of crazy stuff you learn next year. I'm just going to teach you the shortcut, short and dirty way. The hydrogen likes to hang with its homies, its other hydrogens. So the hydrogen is going to, it's going to go to the carbon that already has more of its homies. Which one of these carbons has more hydrogen homies? The one in the middle, carbon one or carbon two? Carbon one. So that's going to go here, making the Br go there. So we end up with a product of two bromopropane instead of one bromopropane. That's actually a pretty important thing in organic chemistry, which is they have recently learned this in organic. They know the mechanism to making this happen. Okay? That's what you all get to look forward to. Are you excited? Yeah. Same thing. For the alkynes, this carbon right here has more H's than this carbon. This carbon doesn't have any. So the hydrogen is going to go there first, and the Br is going to go to the central. If we do only one hydrohalogenation, we're going to make 2-bromopropene. And if we do another one, we'll make 2,2-dibromopropane. 
because after the second addition, well, after you add one, this carbon still has less hydrogens than this one does. So that next H still comes in on that same carbon. That's the addition of HBr. And our final one is the asymmetrical reagent of water. Same concept. If we have this plus HOH, we're going to break this bond and create two spots. Where is H going to go? To the left or the right? H is going to go there. OH is going to go there. And we make two propanol instead of one. Everyone okay? All right, let's practice a few of these and we'll be done. Go to the... Um, those are all. Any other any other um, Roman numerals that you see there? Roman numerals three, four, and five. Cross them out. You're not responsible for them. Go to the page that says basic organic reactions. We're only going to do one through seven, and that's after the advanced nomenclature found on page ten. So let's draw this out. What does ethane look like? There's ethane. And we're going to add chlorine to it. It might be easier to see it if I go CH3CH3. It's saturated. There's no pi bond, so it has to be a substitution. What are we going to make? What? OK, HCl is a byproduct. What's our real product, though? Chloroethane. So it's like this. Okay, 2-butene and hydrogen, 2-butene, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 2-butene, we're going to add hydrogen. Okay, we have the presence of a double bond, that's a saturation issue, it's going to break open this double bond, and what do we end up making? Butane, and I'm going to write the names of the products. All right, ethyne plus one mole of hydrogen. So ethyne looks like that. We're going to add one mole of hydrogen. It's going to saturate and make what? Good, ethene. Ethyne and two moles of hydrogen. What does that do? Ethane. Two butene and bromine. Again, we're adding over a double bond. So what does that make? Two three dibromobutane. So we're going to do this, right? It's to break the bond, and we're just going to add BRs there, and so we get two comma three dibromobutane. Okay, two more. Two methyl, two butene. All right, so two methyl, two butene. There's our two methyl and our two butene. And water. So I'm going to write water since it's an asymmetrical reagent as HOH. So I'm going to add H to one side of the double bond and OH to the other to saturate that bond. Where am I going to put the OH on what carbon? Correct. I'm going to put the OH here because there's less H's on that. There's only one H on the left carbon, but there's two H's on the right. So the other H is going to go there. And so what's the name of that product? 2-methyl-2-butanol. Two OK, the last one is very similar, except now instead of adding water, we're adding another asymmetrical reagent called HCl. The Cl is going to go where the least H's are. The H is going to go where there's more. So we're going to have the Cl here. And the H will be put on and saturate that other carbon, making 
two methyl, oops, not two methyl, what did I do wrong there? Alphabetized, it's two chloro, two methyl, what? Butane. And that is all of organic, three days worth.